Hello, and welcome to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast with your host, me, Hal Coleman, uncensored and unplugged. Pay attention, take lots of notes, because you're going to find out exactly how to get more new customers, more referrals, and grow your business. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him Mike at InternetAudioGuide.com. Well, hello, this is Hal Coleman, and welcome to another episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. I'm here uh, representing Mr. Mr. Offline, and I'm here with Mr. Online, Mike Stewart. I hope. Are you here, Mike? I'm here online. I don't know if I'm offline anymore these days, but uh, but right now well, for the day, I'm existing in the virtual world of audio online podcasting and live streaming and all the things that I love, Hal. So good to be here, buddy. There you go. Me too. And I'm sitting here today excited because talking is what I like to do. At least my wife says so. And I got somebody I really want to talk to as our guest today, uh, the one and only legendary the Bug Doctor original, Jerry Shepard. How are you doing, Jerry? Hal, Mike, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on. This is a, a real honor and a treat. Oh, listen, I'm excited because you had me on a, a podcast a, a while back, and we had so much fun. I said, mm-hmm. man, I got to get Jerry back over here to continue our conversation. Yeah, we sure did. It's like we're old fishing buddies or something. Ain't that the truth? And when I come down there, we're going to really become fishing buddies. <laughs> you know what a, an online guy does when there's two bug guys in the house? What's he do? He mutes his microphone and, and listens. Bye. Ah, Good. Get out of here, Mike. You don't know anything yeah. about bugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, listen, I, I, uh, I'm so excited, and I've got, uh, a million things I want to cover in this brief four hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Let me but, grab lunch. Uh, I know a lot of our, our, our followers, uh, may not, I say a lot of them. I know I'd be surprised if anybody wasn't familiar with you, but I know there are people out there in different areas of pest control that may not be really familiar with you and your business and your story and pest cemetery and everything. So would you indulge me and just, Take a few minutes and tell everybody the story of Jerry Shepard. How'd you become the bug guy? How did Pest Cemetery come about? I mean, uh, wow. tell us your story. I will. I'll start with the bug doctor first since it predates uh, Pest Cemetery, but it rolls right with it. And, uh, you know, I started back in 1984 uh, and I, I in Baltimore. And I was a short order cook and hated my life. I mean, I was in a sweat box of a little kitchen. Uh, The only window was where people could look in and watch me make their sandwiches. And I'm in a long sleeve shirt, PPE, you know, and just, I mean, just sweating and and hating life and putting those sandwiches together uh, and putting them in a bag. And the line would go around the corner, Hal, I, I kid you not. And I guess people liked my sandwiches. So I was making, I don't know, about 12 bucks an hour at the time, which way back then was awesome, but uh, had a lot of bills and everything. And so it wasn't enough. And I wanted to get out of this job anyway. So the owners owned uh, a little place across the street, little vegetable stand. And I walked over there one day just, you know, and looked at the line and said, this is it. And I devised a little scheme that I was going to ask for a raise that they couldn't afford and that would force them to get rid of me. And then I could go else, elsewhere because I'm not a quitter. Well, I went over there. My plan backfired. They gave me the raise. 
And so I was stuck being a short order cook for uh, that spring. But I had a friend call me and he said, do you want to make 11 bucks an hour? And I'm like, well, I make 14 now. Uh, Why would I do that? Well, it came with a truck and that's all I needed to hear. If it came with a truck, that freed me up so much. And it was in pest control. And I had no idea. Uh, I've never seen a bug guy before. We never had one in my home growing up in Iowa. But I walked into the Terminex office uh, in uh, uh, Wilso Drive in Baltimore. And how it was like the most important people in the world were in that room. They had their little green ties on. They were chuckling and laughing. They had papers in their hand. They really looked like they had a purpose. And I said to myself, I've got to be a part of this. There's just, I just have to be a part of this. And the branch manager hired me that day. And that was in the late spring of 84. And by uh, the fall, I finally got that little truck because uh, I went through a bunch of training and everything. And it took a while. But, you know, and um, boy, the, the rest is history. I just started uh, loving the industry, loving what I did and actually helping people. And it was just fantastic. And I write about it quite a bit in my books and in my blog. And uh, I learned so many lessons early on from so many great people and later decided, you know, this online thing came around and and I was excited about uh, blogging and, and my 14 clicks a day. And most of those were from my mother saying, good job, son. Nice article. And um, I I was looking around for a way to get my blog more well known. And my blog was, of course, named Pest Cemetery, a name that my son thought of. And this Facebook idea came up, start a, a group on Facebook. So you were, doing, so you, were doing, uh, you were doing Pest Cemetery while you were with Terminex? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Well, I skipped ahead. I did a quantum leap for you. I left uh, Baltimore in uh, 1989 and moved to Florida and uh, started with a company here. And hell, I couldn't. My dreams were shattered for a few years um, because the companies that I went to work for were just subpar. Can I just say that? I mean, it's a family podcast. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We all know. We all know what you mean. Oh, and I, I, one, I could only last three months. Uh, another one I lasted uh, for a year because I had to uh, get the year experience here in Florida so I could test. I was certified in, in uh, Florida in everything except fumigation. I, I, like I said, I love learning. And uh, so as soon as I got my certification here in Florida, I went ahead and um, decided to go out on my own. But the bug doctor was not the first thing I did on my own. I I actually started in a little franchise, which is now defunct, so I can name it. It was uh, Allstate, and they were a huge um, franchise where all us bug guys, uh, disgruntled bug guys, would pay our money, and then we would drive our own vehicles. So there were Pintos out there, Jeeps. Uh, One guy had a Cadillac, (laughs) Um, and we were doing bug control out of all of our own vehicles, paying our own insurance insurance and buying our own chemicals all under their uh, certifications and licenses. Well, apparently that was kind of frowned on and there were a lot of things going, um, you know, under the rug kind of thing. And I lasted about a year, year and a half there. I was the, um, I became the branch manager, which was just a fancy title of Jerry, can you collect all the paperwork? And so I had meetings at my house every week collected the paperwork, sent in the checks, and finally just realized that, too, was a subpar, again, trying to be politically correct, uh, operation, and decided to go out on my own. And while I was at a customer's house, I'll never forget a Mr. Bird. I think he might have passed by now. He was a, one of my customers in my franchise, and I told him of my desire to go on my own, and he was British, And I said, I don't know what to call myself. And he said, why don't you call yourself the bug doctor? And your slogan could be, all my patients die. (laughs) I love it. I kind of like that. I love it. (laughs) That's great. And um, so part of the franchise deal is if you ever went on your own, you could take all your old customers with you. So I started with about 30 or 40 paying customers 
But I also started with about 80 or 90 non-paying customers because as the branch manager, all these people that sucked uh, uh, the living out of some old, poor, old, fortunate folks, they would you know, get the money up front, suddenly had no vendor uh, because they left town or went out of business or quit the franchise. And I just couldn't quit on them. I couldn't do that to them. So for the next year, year and a half, I did a, a slew of customers free of charge on my own dime until the time came around for them to renew. And a bunch of them stayed with me. So actually, I've had a lot of customers that have been with me before the bug doctor was even born. And that was in July of 1993. Yeah. Well, that that's that's awesome. Now, I'm sitting here thinking for anybody who's listening and uh, – uh wonders how somebody gets to be the head of a successful company there's a story behind it they all have a story behind it you know and and a lot of people go into business not not only in pest control but any business and uh they see the owner that they're working for uh but they don't know the owner's story there's a story there and that's why a lot of people don't don't succeed when they go on their own because they didn't know the story and they didn't realize what they were up against and what they were going to have to do to ultimately get to where that person was does that make sense that makes complete sense and i will tell you i did not know anybody's story i i saw some of the successful guys here in town and uh just knew i needed to be like them but Boy, how I, you know, some of the people on the forums, I mean, they're rock stars. They just take off and they do so well. I want to say it took me three years just to hit 60,000 in a year. So I was not the rock, the rock star and, you know, and no excuses uh, because others were doing it, but we didn't have the internet back then. Uh, a lot of this, uh, you know, it was still phone book ads and things like that. And, I was just a slow starter, but I stuck with it. Like I said, I just, I'm not one to give up. Yeah, I know you're not. Well, one thing you'll agree with, I'm sure, is those people that just take off and grow, uh, they're not spending the bulk amount of their time learning how to kill bugs dead, or they're spending the bulk of their amount of time learning how to become better marketers. Yeah, I agree. They, they, but, you know, there's uh, such wisdom in that, too. Uh, you know, work on your business and not in. And that's a lesson that took me a long time to learn. I guess I needed a coach like you <laughs> to bring that out of me, but it was uh, forever coming. God, I needed a coach like me for, for <laughs> 15, 15 of the 18 years I was in business. The last three, I had a coach. I ran into Larry Latimer, who you've probably heard me talk about, but he changed my yeah. life. He was a he was a direct response marketer, and he spoke at conventions and talked about selling and motivation and things. He had a set of back then it was cassettes called "Building a Better You," and it was like eight cassettes. And he gave me those and took me under his wing, and we kind of started using my pest control business as somewhat of a guinea pig. Oh, okay. He'd show me, you know, he would say, "Well, let me show you what to do. Let me show you how to make direct mail work. Let me show you how to." get somebody to say yes to you five times in 30 seconds and then give you a commitment to do business. He began just teaching me all of these psychological things. And, you know, really it's, it's not so much about uh, how to get somebody to say yes to you as it is, it is keeping them from saying no to you. Gotcha. Uh, You know, I tell people, if you, if you've ever, uh, you know, had somebody say, well, this looks good, you know, but uh, I don't know. Let me, let me think about this for a while. Let me think about this. You know, that's the last thing you want them to do is have to think about it, but you really kind of got them confused if they had to think about it in most that's cases. True. Anyway, so it's learning all this stuff and you've learned, learned a lot and you've got now, now tell us a little bit about pest cemetery because okay. that, that just thing blows me away. It's just <laughs> incredible. Well, I'm I'm extremely blessed with uh, the Facebook group Pest Cemetery and all the uh, fellowship and friends that I now have because of this um, group. And I started it, like I said, uh, I think it was uh, January of 2010, and it was mainly a vehicle for my blog to get more clicks, <laughs> get more people reading my articles. And it started very, very slow. It it was, it took forever to hit a hundred members and it was an open group. So uh, 
anybody could join. So I had some paintball friends. I had some other people. Oh, yeah, I'll you know, join your group or, or maybe I clicked them in. And it wasn't until uh, some uh, gal who was a professional uh, pest controller said, you know, I'd like to share on this group, but I, you know, it's open to my potential customers and I don't really want to do that. So I took a big chance, a big risk, because I figured it, I didn't understand Facebook, still really don't. Uh, but closing the group sounded so final to me. And I thought, well, this is it. And uh, so I closed it. And then I started vetting as best I could uh, with, you know, making sure it's just bug people and slowly started uh, booting some people out that really didn't belong. And um, all of a sudden it just started growing and it went um for back then, kind of ballistic. I mean, we got up to about four or 500 members and we made a great big deal about it. And suddenly, how people were making designs for me for, you know, the logo and songs. And uh, someone made me an interactive map where you could put your little icon. And the map still exists today, but it's locked out since the guy, the original owner, I, we can't find him. And I tried to take it over, but, you know, there are members literally, and this was five years ago, uh, almost in every uh, hemisphere of the world. It just, it blew me away. England, Australia, uh, Alaska, everywhere. So if we were to update that map now, of course, it would really uh, be mind boggling. But here we are, you know, just uh, going along. And, and I never thought, I thought maybe when we hit a thousand members, uh, we would kind of level off. But it just rolled past that, rolled past 2,000, got up to 5,000, uh, and it really started kicking into where we were adding sometimes 100 members a month. And uh, like this month already, I think we're up to 80 some. And, and, you know, I get so blessed to hear uh, quotes or, or um, references to Pest Cemetery at CEU meetings, uh, professors, entomologists. Uh, speakers all saying, hey, I learned this from Pest Cemetery. you got to get in this. So it has taken on a life of its own, and we now have over 10,000 members, which is just phenomenal to me. And we've gone on cruises. We've done seminars. Uh, you and I have done a seminar in Orlando. Most of those folks were Pest Cemetery. Uh, you know, and we're planning another, which uh, I don't know if I should have let the cat out of the bag, but <laughs> there it is. Um, and, and it's just crazy to me. Uh, I'm having a party here at my house and uh, it's all these are people from my town that are competitors and not one of us brings up, a, you know, oh, you undercut me or uh, what's your price? We're all fellowshipping and like-minded and we're all just uh, friends in the industry. And so I could call someone and they would help me out or they could call me and I would do the same. Whereas maybe 10, 15 years ago, that would not be the case. We all seem to be enemies. So it has taken on a real life of its own. And I want to believe that it has fostered some great and wonderful things in the industry. Oh, believe me, it's a re it is an amazing resource. You know, I've had a few technical questions here about things around my house that, uh, you know, I haven't uh, killed a bug other than with a fly swatter now in about 13 <laughs> years. But, uh, oh, no, and I got a bug assault gun, too. So, oh, there you go. Man, you, you tell, I tell you, carpenter bees and flies around here, uh, <laughs> They don't have good things to say about me and my bug. No, I'm sure. You know, other than that, so when I have a question, I don't even know what I'm not up to date on all the new products and regulations and everything else. So I just throw it out there on Pest Cemetery every now and then, and it's amazing the response, an immediate response. Yes. I mean, it's like, so how did that person? As I said, so I came to the conclusion that n nobody that's in pest cemetery works. They just sit there waiting to answer somebody's <laughs> question. <laughs> I've, I've wondered that myself a few times, boy, I tell you. But, uh, yeah, people are re ready to help for the most part, ready to give. And that's the, um, the whole attitude and uh, whole thing I've tried to uh, 
um, encourage all this time. And, you know, I have my off days where I might snip or snap and uh, someone else, but it all comes back down to we're all in this together. Let's keep learning uh, together. And it's just, it's really, really great when it's all clicking and great. It really is. And, and your story is, uh, it's, it's just a fantastic story. I knew bits and pieces of it, but uh, uh, you know, so, so there are a lot of, a lot of PCOs and WCOs out there that are one man operators and two man operators that want to stay that way. And there's yes. nothing at all wrong with staying that way. You know, when I, I left arrow exterminators, uh, I was with them for six years, three years as a, as a termite inspector and pest control technician, and then went into sales for three years <clears throat> and then uh, <clears throat> spent three years, excuse me, <clears throat> 100% commission sales, you know, no base pay, no paid holidays, no nothing. So I did that for three years, great education. And then I went out on my own, uh, you know, as a one man with a spray can. And then several, uh, three of my really good friends over there, uh, all we all left within a 24-month period and started our own businesses. Uh, and a couple of us, you know, really – made the choice to grow our businesses. I wanted to grow my right. business. I wanted to, I wanted to have a, I had envisioned that thing where I had people out there crawling under houses and then attics and killing the bugs and taking care of my customers. And I was networking at the chamber of commerce or having a business meeting on a golf course or, to, you know, working a business deal in a bass boat. And that's kind of the vision that I, I had. It wasn't so much about, money as it was about freedom to do what I wanted to do. Again. So yeah, that's so a great point. two of us did that, but two of the other guys chose to remain one man operators for, you know, they have been for the past 25 years. And uh -huh. so, uh, and they've done well, I'm sure it's lucrative and, and they never wanted the hassle of employees or workman's comp or any of that stuff. They just wanted to be good, solid, have a good solid route that paid him a good living. And that's, you know, uh, you know how they say uh, people with children sitting across the restaurant from people who don't have any children and they sit at each other, look at each other and they envy each other. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. It was kind of that thing. That. But I've heard that before, but I like it. Or some people say, and they feel sorry for each other or they envy each other. Either <laughs> one. But bottom line, there are people out there that don't want to stay one man operators or two man operators. They want to build a business that they can, you know, put a few good years into and uh, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. And they want somebody to write them a check for a million or two or $3 million or, or more. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for that person, that one two man operator who is uh, uh, out there and, you know, working in the business and putting in those 11, 12 hour days, you know, six days a week that has a vision of growing their business, a, a dream, a hope, uh, you know, a, a prayer of growing their business. What would you say is the, the biggest mindset change, the biggest obstacle they're going to have to overcome to get their, their business into, to not just be a bug guy, but to be a businessman and make that business grow. Well, that's a great question. I had a real wise operator here in town who um, has a knack for growing uh, businesses up to about a million and sells them uh, and, and does very, very well and, and good, honest service. Uh, it's not, the you know, sell and burn kind of thing. And he said, Jerry, with every level you hit, you know, say the $100,000 level and then let's say 300000 is the next level and then five. Every single one brings with it a new set of problems, a new set of challenges, and a new mindset. So I'm of the opinion, you know, an, an operator really has a viable business to, to go once you start hitting maybe about 140. That's when you're looking at hiring someone. But you've got to get over that fear that hiring someone is going to cost you. Because that's the wrong attitude. If you feel like it's going to cost you, uh, you'll never do it. You'll never pull the trigger. 
So you've got to look at it like it's an investment in my business. And yes, it's going to take extra hard work on your part, but your work will now shift. Get out of that behind the wheel and, you know, don't have the snap trap in your hand so much. Do like Hal was saying, get get in that bass boat, do some uh, marketing, uh, join a BNI, join, you know, whatever, and start doing that kind of work which is just as hard i mean it's it's sometimes even more brutal and find someone you can trust and put them in there and let them go now there's a whole i'm leaving out a whole bunch of stuff you know maybe you need a little nest egg uh you know so you can have uh, uh an income coming in or you know an extra uh, uh backup source or like for me my wife was a full-time nurse and so we had that as a, a backup uh, but like I said, I was so slow in in customer acquisition, partly because I was just I was always of a tech mind and never of an owner mind. And it wasn't until I switched and that, you know, and, and decided to grow. And my first guy I hired was nine bucks an hour and uh, it changed overnight. And then I started moving to that second plateau when, where there would be a second uh, set of challenges w- awaiting me, but that's that would be one big piece of advice I would give, Hal. Yeah, you don't just change from uh, technician to full time office guy. No, at one hire. It's a, that that first hire takes a little burden off of you, but then you got to start building up that second one to help pay the bills. And, and so there's, you got to keep that profit margin in there. And then the, the second person you hire takes more of the burden off you. So the more people you hire, the less bugs you have to physically kill yourself. Amen. And, and, and going along one, with then, that too, is you really need to know your numbers. So you, you need to know how much you need to make. Is your hourly rate 125? Is it 85? Um, and that's something you really have to nail down and it'll make your decisions a lot more clear. And it's a pain in the butt. I'm not a mathematician, but when I sat down and did my numbers, it cleared up a whole lot of, uh, goals for me and made me more laser focused. Yeah. You need, you need, a you need to be part of a, uh, what Napoleon Hill calls a mastermind group yes, or, or have board of advisors. You need mentors. You know, I, t- I tell, I told one guy, I said, you're going to need several mentors. You're going to need a banker mentor. Mm-hmm. You're going to need a lawyer mentor. Uh, and you're going to need a spiritual mentor. Oh, and, good. And these are the things and a technical mentor. And, you know, a lot of uh, places like, like pest cemetery or like manufacturers, you know, uh, all have uh, some absolutely unbelievable technical people on the staff who are willing to talk to you any day, any, any time and give you technical information. Uh, And as a matter of fact, I I was telling a guy the other day, I said, you need to just, every company needs to put together a, a, a little list that says board of advisors and it can be college professors, uh, uh, and, and, uh, technical people and 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 you put that on put that on your website show it to your customers so we had a board of advisors here we have three you know and, and people love to be on a board of advisors if anybody asked me to i wouldn't heartbeat so it's like it's and and it's really resources now that you have organized and you start to look at and realize i can take advantage of these for information and my customers are going to love it that if i don't know the answer to something look at my board of advisors i have here to turn to that's, uh, yeah that's awesome uh, <laughs> i and, didn't have a board of advisors in 2003 or 1993 yeah, whenever i was <laughs> but you know the big thing is uh, people jump out there and and they think they know what to do and it's not that they're not smart and it's not that they're not inventive and creative and all but there's so much that they don't know mm-hmm about running and growing a business but there are people that can tell you they can answer your question they say here's what you need to do and here's how you do this now and now you're going to be ready for your next one uh so uh, i would encourage anybody that wants to grow your business and your one or two man operation get a board of advisors get a group that you can meet with that you can pick up the phone anytime and call that person and and 
ask whether it's a financial question, whether it's a legal question, whether it's about motivation and spirituality or uh, whether it's about taxes uh, uh, or technical questions. You just right. all those people need to be a phone call away at all times. And now here's a word from our sponsor. Google Pest Control Marketing. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004. Did you hear that? That is a jingle. But more than that, it is an audio logo and what I call a marketing earworm. But you know, that's a bug, that's a worm you want in your local market on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and podcasts like you're listening to right now. Yes, you should do a podcast as a PCO, but we'll talk about that another time. You want your market singing Google your name, what you do, and your phone number. Simple, but it works. If you want to cash in on this marketing bonanza, go to PestControlMarketingJingles.com to learn more. Or just call me, Mike Stewart, at 770-826-3662. Or call Hal Coleman at 770-993-0004. And we would love to show you how to do what we call search and call advertising with earworms. And oh yeah, it works on that old-timey technology of radio and television. Why don't you call us today and learn more? Google Pest Control Marketing. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004. I love that advice. I'm, I'm going to look. I'm going to look into that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it's just uh, take advantage of take advantage of all the information that's out there. You know, I was I was born, and you were born, and everybody listening to this was born with absolutely zero information in our heads. That's right. And zero experience and everything we do now, we learn. Some of us, some people like to learn by trial and error and keeping their nose to the grindstone. And other people uh, like me, I learned to be this way and I'm this way now. Is like, why would I want to spend an hour trying to figure that out when I can just pick up the phone and call Fred and he'll tell me exactly what to do? Yeah, amen. And that's a little bit of how the group is, you know, that I think that's what is part of the allure. It's a kind of a pseudo uh, board of advisors for sure. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And uh, what a great resource. But anyway, so back to that, uh, back to that struggling one, two man operation, the one that's, uh, yeah. Uh, what else can you tell us that they need to, because I know we could talk about this forever, but I want this sure. to come from Jerry Shepard, not from Hal Coleman. And cause well, I, I, want, I, I want to squeeze really all I can it. out of you while I got you on here. There you go. That's fine. Uh, I love to help uh, in any way I can. I really love what you said about a spiritual advisor or a, um, uh, you know, somebody motivating you. And I think that's really important because there are so many, I can, I can think back of so many dark and lonely nights where I'm lying in bed wondering how I'm going to pay the mortgage uh, this is in the early days. Uh, and, you know, do I have enough gas to get across town? And will that lady pay me in cash so I have gas to go back? And, and there were so many different um, things that I was unsure of. And I did not have the board of advisors, but I did have a couple of people and maybe God put them in my way, uh, you know, out at a, a little convenience store somewhere. I'd run into Chuck from Apple uh, Pest Control, and he was a legend in this town. And he would always take time to uh, talk to me and motivate me. But I didn't have Chuck on speed dial. I didn't even have a cell phone back then. But as time went on and I got a, a network of people, you know, it's easier now that I can lean on somebody for a little bit of motivation because the only thing I know how I'm, I'm like that old school nose to the grindstone is persistence. I Persistence will never lose. Uh, if you're persistent long enough, you will break through. But it, do you have to have, uh, you know, some help along the way, someone to, you know, put their hand on your shoulder. And for me, it was my wife. My children were awesome. And then I had a couple of friends here and there and I just kept going. So 
reach out. And one great thing about the group, not to keep bringing it back up, but that has fostered a lot of those relationships. So I guess that's a um, also goes along with the board of advisors and, you know, someone you can call across town. You know what that lady did to me? Don't sweat it, Billy. Uh, you know, go on, get the net. You need something like that uh, because there will be a lot of dark and lonely days. And uh, the other thing, you know, to get to your second level, as Hal alluded to, you got to you got to hire that second guy. You really got to free yourself up. And I was big on goals. I was super big on numbers. Um, and they were always low numbers and I just didn't have the confidence in myself or whatever. Sit down with someone like how I'm sure would do this uh, or, you know, some of the other uh, business leaders in our industry to get realistic, just barely not attainable, but they are attainable goals and figure out how you're going to get to them. And you really got to stick to those because otherwise, the the dark days will get you. If you don't have a board of advisors, you, it, you're relying on yourself, and you you won't pick yourself up, and that goal will slip away. And then it's really no longer a goal. It's really no longer a target. It's just a, a source of um, anger, and uh, well, I couldn't make it. And boy, I tell you, is it true still, uh, Hal, that the um, most businesses go out of business in the first five? five years and then one out of three or something like that. And that just shouldn't 82, be. Eighty-two percent of businesses that start up don't make it to the end of the third year. And I'm just, that kills me in pest control. So, you know, when someone starts new here, I try to reach out and, and you know, uh, get them in the group and then give them my phone number. And I've got several that speed dial me all the time, little pictures, say, hey, what's this? Or what would you do here? And I don't mind, uh, you know, it's a big town. It, you know, they'll, probably cross my path somewhere but who cares you um, probably got guys not. that text you a picture and say what's this you say oh that's a mangrove snapper <laughs> yeah, right? yes i had yeah yesterday <laughs> i had two or three pictures like that and yeah. um you know and this guy doesn't doesn't know all of the different bugs he's he's new into it so i'm reaching out and trying to help where in the old days where maybe i didn't have so much but uh, yeah, goal setting and goal achieving is really good. I forget the acronym. Smart goals are going to be, uh, you know, measurable and attainable and all that. And uh, I guess you'd have to Google what that acronym was. But um, it, it, I always try to set goals that I know I can hit, but I got to work to hit them. Yeah, yeah. Plan your work and work your plan. That's yes, an old sir. saying, and that's just so. Uh, you know, you wouldn't build a say. I'm going to build a house on this this acre here, and have a a bulldozer come in and clear out the place for the house, and have somebody come pour found a concrete slab, and then you just say, "Well, I'm going to call the supply house, tell them to bring a bunch of lumber and plywood out here, and some cases and nails, and I'm going to start building me a house." And you got no blueprint. You had no architect draw this thing up. And you're just going to start planning it as you go and hammering things up. And boy, what are you going to end up with? What kind of house? You know. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Okay. And and you know, in, in the end, maybe it's livable, maybe it's not. But it's not a good foundation. Yeah, and planning. You know, looking at the end before you begin. And uh, people, a lot of times that tell me they want to go into pest control business, I say, why do you want to go into it? You know, do you want to go into it to what's your purpose? How, how, what's your, let's talk about how you're going to get out of it and when you're going to get right. out of it. You know, well, right. I want to build a, you know, a million dollar business or $2 million business that I can retire. Okay, well, here's what you have to do. Or they say, I just want to get a business going and I don't want to work too hard anymore, but I want to let my son or my daughter take it over and they can take on off with it. And I just kind of want to ease on out, you know, okay, then that's another thing. So, uh, or I just want to build up a, I'd like to have a $180,000 route and just be me and no employees. Okay. Well, that's another thing, you know, so right. you gotta, you gotta have the, the end in mind as you do with a house, you got to be able to look at a, at a, a house and say, that's, uh, that's a house I want right there. So I'm going to go to Google and order the house plans for that house. 
And, well, uh, and then you've got a plan and you can move forward and uh, yeah, everything is um, set. And if one day you fall behind, you still have the plan and you can uh, you can keep on marching on. I, I think there's a lot of uh, strength in, in those words. Yeah. And you got to know who to listen to. You know, no matter who you are, if you go in business for yourself and you start struggling, you're going to have some of those people who come along and say, you don't need to do this. This is never going to work. Right. Why don't you just why don't you just get rid of these headaches and go get you a good job somewhere so you don't have to deal with all this stuff that's keeping you away. You got the naysayers out there, you yes, know, sir. And, then, and then you've got uh, the, the, uh, for lack of a better word, the brother-in-law out there who's never been in the pest control business in his life, never owned a business in his life, but he's going to sit down and tell you how to do this business and how to be successful. Uh. Yeah, ran into a lot of those over the years, a lot of those. So you got to know who to listen to and who not to listen to, because in a lot of cases, we just listen to the wrong. We, we're looking for that information, but we listen to the wrong person without really putting a lot of thought into it, you know. And uh, so there's a there's just it's all about having information and knowing what to do with that information when you get it you know, knowing how to apply it and how to, uh, how to incorporate it into your business to move your business forward. But uh, a common theme in what we're talking about here and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's having someone else's eyes on what you're doing. And, you know, that sounds like, you know, with a board of uh, trustees and, and uh, someone to lean on. And then what you were just saying, and that kind of plays right in with what you do being a coach You know, I think sometimes people are afraid to be coached like, oh, he's just going to take some of my business or, you know, he's I don't need a a, a, boy. The most successful people in the world have coaches. And Tiger Woods has a golf coach, you know, and uh, and, uh, Tom Brady has a quarterback coach. And uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Brad Pitt has an acting coach. He needs so one. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's a matter of fate, I'm sure, there. I'm but, just you know, jealous of the guy. The, uh, the, uh, uh, it's like if anybody's played a sport. A sport I, I, people ask me about my coaching, and I say, well, you, look, if you play golf uh, and, 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 you, and you play golf once a week for 20 years, and you listen to all the four people that you play golf with about how to play a better game of golf, and you keep doing the same thing and listen to what they tell you. They probably know better than you are. And at the end of 20 years, you're not going to be any better than you were 20 years ago. But if you – I I was going to get a new set of golf clubs one time. I don't play much anymore, but I used to play some. And I was playing with a foursome, and I didn't know this one guy who was in a group, but we got to know each other real quick, and we were having a good time. And – I said, I'm going to get some new golf clubs. I got, these are old clubs. I said, and they were given to me when they were old clubs. And the guy bought a new set of clubs, gave me these. Now I've been playing with them for 10 years and I I need some new clubs, you know, because I heard there's all this technology and everything's better. And the guy Mm -hmm. said, let me tell you, he said, when I grew up, he said, we lived on a golf course. And my dad was the golf pro at that golf course the whole time I was a kid growing up. Till I left home, my dad was a golf coach. He said, my dad would tell you to take the money that you're planning on spending on that new set of golf clubs and go spend that money on coaching from a golf pro. And he said, your game will skyrocket. Huh? He said, it's not in the clubs. He said, my dad could take one of those clubs there that you say are no good, and he could hit the ball 325 yards as straight as a rope. So he can prove that it's not the club. And wow. he said, but take the money you're going to spend on clubs and spend it on, on, uh, golf coaching. And, and I pass that along to, I translate that to my clients a lot. I say, take the money you were planning on spending on advertising and spend it on coaching to learn how to create advertising that works and you'll create advertising. that works for the rest of your entire life. Your game will change. And, and you take that information with you forever, you know, but, that's fantastic. But they, they they think, you know, you got to know where to spend the money. You know? Right. 
And you well, I know. remember down in uh, Orlando when you uh, did the presentation and, and you went all through the Yellow Pages and, you know, you translated it because Yellow Pages are, you know, n- not as great as they once were. No, the same I've been using those less lessons ever since. And my advertising has gone. I, I actually use the word exterminator now and proudly so. And, yeah. uh, you know, we are we are kicking some major butt in my little town of Summerfield here uh, and beating all the big boys. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just take, seeing an idea that, and, and if you believe it works and if there's a social proof there that this works, then all you got to do is take it and go apply it. And uh, but you know how many people out of a hundred actually do that? Don't know. Two. I mean, you know, people. <laughs> it's just a. Whoops. A lot, I I know a you know. I roll cigars, handmade cigars. That's one of my oh. hobbies that I do. I I like a cigar every now and then. But I got into cigar rolling a few years ago, and I can roll a really really nice, uh, quite premium long leaf cigar now. And I'll give one to somebody. They say, you, you roll this yourself? Yeah. Where'd you get, where'd you get? The, well, I order the leaves from a leaf wholesaler from an auction house and I get the leaves and I trim, I do the whole thing. You know, I just get bundles of leaves and here's what I got. Uh, man, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that. Uh, can you show me how to do that? Uh, yeah, I can show you how to do it. You know, I can't show you in one day or two days. I can get you started, but by the time you've rolled a, thousand cigars you know you'll be able to roll a fairly decent cigar and they're like mm. oh maybe i'll just i'll just keep, I'll just keep buying them <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh so people and listen i'm not preaching to anybody because i'm exactly the same way yep. i've always been that way people i see all these things i would love to do i would love to know how to do and then i sit back and i say but man you know, I'd, I'd love to know how to play the violin real well, but I know that how much work it would take for that to happen. So I just, right. I guess I'll go to my grave saying, I wish I had learned how to play the violin. <laughs> you know? I'll have, I'll have a violinist uh, there at the ceremony and we'll, we'll play uh, the Ides of Johnny Boy or something. <laughs> there you go. But anyway, uh, so this has been really a cool conversation and I don't think we've even scratched the surface. So can no. we do this again sometime? Oh, I would, I'd be thrilled to do it. Um, it'd be fantastic. And uh, maybe love to have you come on down for the uh, pest cemetery beach party or something. We can do it live. Hey, wouldn't that be fun? And, hey, uh, yeah, but I, I, we'd have to, we, I couldn't talk good with a mask on. You know, uh, uh, we're not, re- <laughs> we're not, uh, <laughs> We're not too worried about it around here. We'll we'll take you. I told somebody, I said, people, when I go to the supermarket once a week, I said, they social distance. They don't come within 20 feet of me. That's why I said, because they did, for some reason, they don't like my Zorro mask. Oh, oh, I see. Wow. Uh, yeah, I might, uh, I might go to the uh, potato chip pile myself for a while. <laughs> well, listen, if, if you, if somebody wanted to, I know you have, don't you have, training available through pest cemetery like a pest cemetery university yeah it's called pest cemetery pro thank you for bringing that up uh it's a an online uh subscription course or uh, a la carte you can go and um view our like our webinar we did uh podcasts uh a lot of training videos i think i have Oh, goodness. If I say 150 hours, I'm probably low of just all the training. And and what I like about it, Hal, and, and for your listeners, it's real stuff. It's 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 me with a shaky handheld camera up under a house showing you uh, how fire ants are doing their thing uh, and getting in and what we need to do to eradicate them or, you know, steer them another way. And uh, it's just it's a labor of love. I really love it. It's called Pest Cemetery Pro. Just click on. It's a 14-day free trial, and you can pick your level of um, uh, subscription, uh, everything to uh, all the videos, everything I do, uh, or just the webinars alone, or just the testing site, and that's where everybody is um, uh 
you know, taking tests, reading an article, and then finally, uh, you know, um, they get a certificate. So right there on the right, if you'll see that Pet Cemetery Pro logo, uh, Hal, yeah, right there. Yeah. There you go. And that and that's where you click it up. And there I am. So the magic of uh, the internet. And, you know, I've been very blessed with it. We've got a, a real good response. Customers are loving it, and they give me requests on it's different awesome. subjects. I looked at it. it. It's awesome. We're and, real excited. And, uh, you know, the uh, we're redoing a lot of the, uh, the look and uh, redoing some of the older videos. And uh, it's just been a fantastic thing. And the sharing has been great. You know, folks like yourself, uh, Daniel D. Dye, uh, entomologists that are just just crazy smart. Uh, are coming and wanting to do webinars or wanting to do presentations. And I'm like, really? And it's just fantastic. So really, yeah. really happy, really, really blessed. It's awesome. Now, let me ask you another question. You don't, you don't actually like really hang around with Daniel D. Dye, do you? I would hang around with that guy every single day <laughs> if I could, but he's about 61 <laughs> miles away. Believe me, I've stalked him. <laughs> Oh, he, I tell you, I love what he does. He is, he's one of my heroes too. He's, uh, he, uh, him and I, his I, wife are just, uh, salt of the earth. Can't just his, his posts and everything. And I, I, mm-hmm. I've only actually met him face to face a couple of times, you know, and it's, it's, a, I felt, felt like I, I already knew him. He, what a great guy. Yes. But, so if somebody wanted to get in touch with you to go a little deeper with you on some of this stuff, uh, what? You, want, you want to give us the contact information, or is that all? Sure. They can log, log in to www.pestcemeterypro, all one word, all E's, no A in there, pestcemeterypro.com. And there's a contact button there. Uh, you can read the about. You can uh, peruse all the different categories. And uh, if you wanted to, you can just uh, send me an email. The best email really is uh, bug doctor at embarkmail.com. That's bug doctor, all one word. Embark is E-M-B-A-R-Q, mail, M-A-I-L.com. Uh, the Pest Cemetery Pro, uh, for some reason, keeps, uh, it might be a day before I get it. So, uh, but you can, you know, the contact is right there on the site. And of course, uh, you can message me on Facebook. I'm easy to find there. And uh, always respond. So, uh, yeah, we have a store in that. Uh, there's a couple of my books, you name it. Um, we're real excited about the future, and I'm real excited about people like yourself and so many others who are, um, you know, taking part in helping all this grow. And it's it's just been um, a great labor of love for us. Well, it sure has been a great uh, labor of love for me to have you on here today, and it's it's been well, fun. You. and. We're gonna we're gonna kind of wind it up here, but uh, will you do this again with us? I will. I, I absolutely will. Would love to do it, um, and uh, just about anything. You know, I know the Corona kind of set us back, but the plans you and I talked about before are are still in the back of my mind. Yep, yep, we mine too. And so, uh, thank you for being with us and sharing your great wisdom and all the good stuff you've done and uh folks if you if you want to get in touch with me to talk about my coaching program uh, i'll give you an hour uh session free of charge we'll go over all your marketing i'll send you a little questionnaire to fill out and when i get it back that's so i don't have to spend the hour asking you a hundred questions but uh we'll find some low-hanging fruit for you and get you some good direction and it won't cost you a penny and you can call me at 770-993-0004. You can do the same thing with Mike Stewart if you want to talk about your online presence, online marketing strategies, videos, jingles. Uh, Mike will be happy to talk with you. You can reach him at 770-826-3662. He'll be happy to speak with you anytime. And uh, Mike, just by chance, are you are you with us here still? I am so impressed with the two of you guys. I mean, two bug guys that really know their stuff. So, Jerry, I can't. I, that beach party y'all talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, I'm getting in the car and heading to Florida right now. Hey, you are more than welcome. We, I just got some jet skis, and uh, we need to, to break them in. Well, come by I, here and pick me up, Mike. 
All right, I'll I'm pick right you on, up. I'm we'll, right on the way. You I'm know, right Jerry, we'll bring our we'll bring our guitars. We'll play hey. we'll, we'll play music. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, I am a jet jet ski expert. Uh, oh. Hell, tell you that. In fact, uh, uh, that that's one of the things I love doing: uh, music, internet, grandkids, uh, jet skis, the lake, the ocean, and uh, and because of Hal Coleman, marketing killing bugs is my business. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go. It only took me a half an hour of having jet skis to have FWC pull me over and almost write me three hundred dollars worth of fines. So I might need some of your, uh, I might bend your ear a little bit about jet skis. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. Let, let's let's start Jet Ski Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there you go. There you go. That might carry a different connotation. But listen, guys, it's been fun, uh, and we'll stick around a few minutes uh, after we're done. But folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I hope you learned something, as always, to take away to help you grow and be bigger and better at what you do with yourself and your business. And uh, so, until next time. Uh, thank you for watching and li- or for listening to this episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes and on your phones and in Stitcher on your Android. But more importantly, go to our website, pestcontrolmarketingpodcast.com. Subscribe to our email list to always be notified of new episodes. You're never going to want to miss what we've got coming up next, and you never know what we're going to be able to do to help you with your pest control marketing.